wave that there might be a voice problem. So I will start over. <laughs> Again, I was saying my name is Hassan Yunus, uh, the chairman of vascular surgery at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Uh, today we'll be talking about vascular health. It's a, an, an interactive session that would like to hear your questions and comments and answer them live as you ask them. Meanwhile, I'll be talking about some common uh, topics that usually come up every time we talk about vascular health. Uh, one of the first things that come to my mind and the most questions I receive are about diabetic foot. As you know, diabetes is a disease that affects the entire body. It affects the eyes, the, the kidneys, for example, but at the same it causes blockage of the arteries, especially the small ones in the legs and the heart and so forth. Same time, the diabetic patients, if the diabetes, if the sugar continues to be uncontrolled, what happens is they start having pain in their feet. And with time, that turns into numbness and they stop feeling their feet, which make them prone to injuries and ulcers that are very difficult to heal. The reason for that is the diabetic patient's immune system is weak and the blood circulation is weak uh, as well, which they have low blood flow in their legs, less perfusion. And with that combination, we will have wounds that stay for a long time, causing problems that leads to bad infections and even gangrene. And that those patients that they need really treatment timely. And if they don't, they, what can happen is what you hear about called the gangrene is a really bad infection of the feet. So what do we do? First thing is prevention. Anything in medicine, start with prevention. Uh, patients with diabetes should control their sugars all the time. One by healthy diet and regular exercise also by being compliant with their medications and visit frequently or not frequently, more um, as scheduled with their endocrinologists. Uh, for those who do develop this patient, the, those problems like diabetic foot, you have to see a specialized vascular surgeon and preferably in a center that has all the available services required to treat that complex disease. Um, other problems that we get asked about or, and, and we can talk about today are varicose veins. So multiple patients develop uh, varicose veins in the legs, those big bulgy veins that appear uh, around the knees and below the knees. Um, they can increase in size with time and uh, they can cause some um, pain, itching, or heaviness in the leg. So who's at risk? Female are higher risk than males, and the risk increases with if it runs in the family and with uh, occupations that require standing for a long period of time, like teachers, nurses, and even mothers. What else? The pregnancy can make these uh, varicose veins worse. And if they continue to swell and cause the symptoms we talk about, they can cause thickening of the skin after that and darkening around the ankles. And even in their really progressed uh, stage, they can cause ulcers that very difficult to, to heal. So what do we do about that? Again, we go back, first thing, always prevention. We want to stop things before they happen. So change lifestyle with regular exercise, leg elevation at rest, and weight loss for patients who are a little bit overweight, that helps as well uh, decrease the pressure on their legs before they have varicose veins. Also, we have to support our legs with compression garment, like compression socks and stockings, that prevents those veins from getting worse. If they get to that state that need to be treated, again, they need to be seen by a vascular specialist where those varicose veins can be diagnosed appropriately and see what's the appropriate treatment for those. Uh, you will hear about multiple treatments. Uh, just don't be confused. Not every treatment fits all. 
you'll hear about laser, you'll hear about uh, sclerotherapy, radiofrequency, and even glue like venous seal. However, the doctor, after uh, diagnosing the, the, the patient and uh, thoroughly grow, go through the case, they determine what's best treatment uh, that will fit you. By the way, um, if you have any questions, please go ahead and ask them uh, and I can stop and answer them before we move to other topics. We did get a question from an audience member asking when should you get vascular surgery? Uh, can you be more specific about which condition? Um, and then doctor, since it's also like Ramadan as well, are, are, do you have any tips or things that people can follow to have uh, their optimum vascular health, for example? Uh, that, that's a good question. All of us absolutely in Ramadan, uh, most important thing is don't get dehydrated. Um, you know, you know, our, our blood is what carries oxygen and nutrition to all our organs. And you have to stay hydrated when after iftar and avoid dehydration with first drinking adequate amount of water and then avoiding any uh, foods or drinks that will cause you to go too much to the bathroom, which will dehydrate you and take the fluid out of your body. Uh, <clears throat> varicose veins, the tiny ones, do they also require attention? It depends on the severity. So there are smaller veins called spider veins. Uh, they are the, uh, the, 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 the smaller member of the, the varicose veins, but they're more into the skin and they have different appearance, which looks like spiders, small spiders. In their mild um, form, uh, they don't form any symptoms. However, with time, they can worsen and they can cause some, some uh, itching or burning. And those can be treated in office with a very simple procedure called sclerotherapy, small needles where a material is injected and closes those veins. Thank you, Doctor. There are many people who cannot cover their uh, uh, feet when they are when they go to bed. They mm -hmm. feel like it's burning too much. Is this part of uh, the vascular? Yeah. So you know, it looks like, of course, difficult to diagnose just by this symptom. But this is one of the symptoms that we call peripheral neuropathy, where the peripheral nerves overfires and they become very painful and burning, especially at night. Uh, one of the things that has to be inspected is the if the patient is diabetic, is the diabetes controlled or not. Controlling the diabetes can give the patients a lot of relief, but at the same time, there are medications that can help calm down those uh, peripheral nerves uh, to give the patient some comfort. There's another question. I'm a nursing student. I want to ask you that how can I maintain the weight of me during Ramadan? If I'm doing Goza, I feel like my body is going lost. I don't think I understood this is the question. Maybe the last part, please. They want to, uh, I'm doing Goza. It says I'm doing Goza. I feel like my body is going lost. So maybe the, is that uh, an the exercise question is or? about, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure. So I'm a nursing student, so. Okay. Anyway. It's maintaining weight during Ramadan, basically. So if you're worried about weight loss during Ramadan, uh, the, 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 the key is to schedule your food accordingly. So eating healthy, of course, and not skipping sahur. And for sahur, uh, you can eat slow digesting proteins like the casein, which is in cottage cheese or Greek yogurt. Um, also eating healthy uh, fats, like which is found in nuts like almonds, uh, walnuts, and and so forth. Is there any long-term side effect of overdose atropine? I think this is uh, out of the scope of this conversation. The atropine is used only in the hospitals for uh, low heart rate. So we hopefully uh, you don't have to give it at home. <laughs> Does the blueness of a hand related to blood vessels? So the blueness of the hand, it differs. The most common reason is not. Uh, 
the first uh, one of the most common causes usually is our skin when we get cold the body the body drags blood away from our skin uh, to reserve it and to reserve our heat and what happens is the hand can get cold uh, but they go away just when we get warm that being said there is there are conditions uh, medical conditions like Raynaud's where the hands the that process that I just described that where the small vessel spasm uh, causing this blueness lasts for longer than usual and that can become painful or change the color of the hand or even sometimes can cause wounds and those need to be seen by a vascular doctor uh, where they again to correctly diagnosed and treated. Um, we've got a question from a user saying, I have been taking Lyrica for my chemo. Uh, will my body become immune to the medicine or it seems not to be working for me anymore? Is it within the scope of... I'm really sorry to hear that. This is out of the scope of vascular, but um, you have to, um, you know, discuss that with the, with your physician and I hope you feel better. Um, in, in general, when we speak about prevention, are, are most vascular related issues lifestyle uh, related or could it even be genetic? That's an excellent question. Usually, the what we call peripheral arterial disease, the disease that affects your arteries and block them, is what we call multifactorial. It has many reasons that when they accumulate, they have the largest effect. So yes, some uh, patients have a predisposing factor that genetically their vessels are more ready to form blocks and harden. But that being said, lifestyle has, plays a, a big role as well and the number one is smoking it damages the the artery lining from inside which causes the arteries to accumulate calcium fat and causes the hardening and after that clots can form as well uh, other causes is the uh, high lipids the hyperlipidemia if your lipids are high the cholesterol is high you have to do your part where dieting and exercise in addition to uh, pres prescription medication by the appropriate physician to lower your uh, cholesterol. Uh, the other factors like diabetes and blood pressure also needs to be controlled to prevent the formation of blood vessel disease. One question, is leg swelling related to vascular problems? Uh, leg swelling can be caused by so many problems. Um, one of them is, as we dis the discussed earlier, if the patient have leg swelling with varicose veins, with veins bulging out of the legs, that can be due to vascular uh, issues. But other than that, there are other many issues, including the heart, uh, the kidney, the nutrition, and the overweight. For that, for that reason, uh, leg swelling without varicose vein, best seen by um, uh, your primary physician to start the workup, and if there is any vascular cause, we're happy to see and help you with that. Um, in, in general, uh, people can often see their veins in, through a normal perspective. So when should they be sort of concerned um, and visit a, a doctor to get a consultation? That's actually a very good question. Uh, all of us have veins, and even we have the where we, we think that the varicose veins. But when those veins, that especially patients with very light skin, uh, almost as transparent that you can see their veins, uh, those, the, those veins we all of us have. When they bulge, they will come outside the skin, they will become tortuous, and you can feel them that they're abnormal. And then after that, the heaviness, the itching, the changing color around those veins will give you indicators that these veins are much larger than normal. If, if you prefer your question to be answered in Arabic, please write the question in Arabic and I'm happy to answer it. So, other things we'll talk about the uh, vascular awareness. Uh, you hear about the 
the dilatation of the aorta, the aortic aneurysm, which, which means the arteries enlarge beyond their normal size. To be exact, beyond double the normal size. And um, when that happens, uh, usually the arteries are not normal and they need to be treated, whether medically or surgically, depends on the size. Uh, one of the things that can cause aortic aneurysm is a family history of aortic aneurysm making the arteries weak and make them dilate to a large size. And the other uh, factors that we talked about that damages the artery, like uh, smoking and hypertension and cholesterol, high cholesterol and so forth. Uh, what's the, uh, how do we know? Any, anyone with family history of aortic aneurysm or male about, uh, older than 65 uh, smoker, they can be screened easily by an ultrasound test that doesn't include any radiation or contrast to see if even they have that condition. For the patients who have this condition, they don't have to be treated surgically right away. The treatment first is medically as long as what we call small and that need to be optimized by your vascular uh, doctor uh, and you will be followed uh, closely uh, and hopefully it will never get to the size. If it gets to the size that needs to be treated, then we can treat it either in a minimally invasive way or uh, open surgery way, depends on the, the shape and the size of that aneurysm. Varicose veins uh, linked to pregnancy, how long would they take to disappear? And <clears throat> when should the lady see a doctor if they did not disappear? That is a, that's an excellent point as well. So the during pregnancies, many things happen. One, hormonal changes. And the other thing is the um, baby will push on the veins, the big veins that we have in the pelvis that the blood will come back slower than normal and will have more pressure down into the veins so the varicose veins start bulging and getting bigger. That being said, after delivery, that pressure will be released and after release, if the veins improve and disappear, uh, which is going to depend on your body type and how much uh, movement you make, how much you ambulate and walk and exercise, all that would help empty those veins from your legs um, and hopefully go back to normal size. If they don't and they continue to grow, especially with, re, re, uh, with, with, with repeating pregnancy, with the, with the next pregnancy, then uh, I recommend to be seen by a, uh, a physician where a simple test again with, with uh, ultrasound can be done to see if what we call if there is a reflux flow where the flow is flowing in the opposite side and accumulates in the legs. And we've got a question asking what is the difference between vascular versus oncology type of lymphedema and will the management differ between the two? Uh, yes, uh, there, there is difference. So there are lymphedema is a condition for, uh, for everyone that we the extra fluid in our legs and arms uh, if you might consider it as gutters as channels where it accumulates the fluid put it together the small small channels back into the veins into our circulation and if we have any problem with our lymph system the fluid will empty slower or don't empty at all from that limb so some conditions are we're born with that the, our lymphatics are slow and uh, don't do their job. And, they, and some of them, they happen due to something. What this could be, this could be from injury, from surgery, like knee surgery, for example, or oncological surgeries. So patients, uh, unfortunate patients with breast cancer that extended into their axilla under their arm, uh, when they have surgery to take all the tumor out, uh, the, the oncology surgeons will take out the lymph nodes under the armpit. And when they do so, that arm will, will empty much slower than normal, which will cause swelling. And that's the difference. Mm -hmm. 
If you don't have any more questions, I would like to thank you for joining us and taking the time to spend with us. I hope this was helpful and I want to wish everyone Ramadan Kareem.